All right, YouTube. Today I wanna to walk you through what's one of the most common problems in statics. Uh, and that is a situation where we have a block resting on a beam and that beam is being supported at each end. And what we need to do in this problem is go through and work out the reaction forces by each of these supports. That is to say, we're gonna work out just how hard this support over here on the right is pushing up on the beam, as well as how hard this support on the left is pushing up on the beam. Now the first issue we run into with this problem is that because the 50 pound load is shifted off towards the left, we're gonna see a little bit larger reaction force on the left side than we do on the right side. So we can't simply say that these loads are split evenly. So in this problem, we're gonna to need to start at one of the fundamental truths of statics, and that is that the sum of all torques around any point on this entire beam needs to add up to zero. Where torque is given by the equation, fr sine theta, where f is the force, r is the distance or radius from a pivot point to the load, and sine theta is the angle between this force and this radius vector. So we're gonna take a look at all the forces which are acting on this beam, and then look at how they contribute to the torque around some very carefully chosen points on this beam. Now we know there's gonna be a reaction force on both the left and right side of this beam, but there's also these loads which are acting downward on the beam. There's gonna be this 50 pound load pushing downward on the beam, as well as gravity pulling downward on the beam itself, right in the middle of the beam. Now because there's four different forces acting on this beam, we're gonna have four separate torques. So now we're gonna take a look at the sum of all torques around each support individually. And by looking at the torques around a single support, we'll be able to solve for one of our unknowns. So first I wanna take a look at the sum of all torques around this left support. Now the sum of all torques around the left support must add up to zero. If it doesn't, that means this beam is either going to tip downward or somehow rise up like a drawbridge. Now, there's four different forces acting on this beam and each of them is producing a torque. So for each force, we're going to use our equation for torque to insert a torque term into this larger function for the sum of all torques. So starting on the left side, there's a force at the left side, but that force is acting at a distance or a radius of zero away from the left support. Really, the force by the left support is producing no torque around the left support. So that term's zero. Plus we're gonna have this 50 pound force acting at a radius of two. Now, the force is acting straight downward and this radius vector is horizontal. That is to say, the angle between the 50 pounds and the radius vector is 90 degrees. So for our sine theta term, we're gonna see the sine of 90. Next, we have this 10 pound force acting in the middle of the beam. That is four feet away from this left support. So we're gonna have 10 pounds acting at a radius of four. And again, this force is at a right angle to the beam itself. And last, we have this force on the right-hand side. Now this force is acting at a radius of eight feet. And again, at a right angle to the beam itself. Now there's one issue we have to be careful of here, and that is the sign of this torque term. You see this 50 pounds, when they're acting on the beam, we're ultimately trying to cause the beam to rotate clockwise around this support. And this 10 pound force on the beam was doing the same thing. So when we look over here at the right hand support ultimately what that's doing is trying to keep this beam from falling down clockwise or really you could say it's acting in the counterclockwise direction and that is to say the torque here is going to be in the negative direction now if you forget to put this negative in it's not the end of the world it's simply going to yield what might be a strange result for the sine of our magnitude of f so now we have an equation where our only unknown is the force on the right support And we find the force on the right support is 17.5 pounds. Now, depending on whether or not you put this negative here, you may find a positive or negative value here on this result. What I find is easiest to do is rather than getting caught up in the negatives too much, to simply stop and look at this result and decide whether this force is up or down. 
And in this case, we know this support is gonna be holding up the beam, therefore the right support is acting up. Now you'll notice, having looked at the sum of all torques around the left support, we were able to solve for the force by the right support. So now we're gonna just flip things around and look at the sum of all torques around the right support to solve for the force on the left support. So the sum of all torques around the right support equals zero. Now starting over here on the left, we again have the force on the left side, just like before. But now that force on the left side is acting at a distance or radius of eight feet away from the right support, not zero. That was the distance to the left support. Now this force is at a right angle to the beam. So we're gonna have this sine of 90. And that term is one. Plus we're gonna have our 50 pound force. That 50 pound force is acting at a distance or radius of six feet away from the right support. Again, the sine of 90, which is still one. Then we've got this 10 pound force right in the middle of the beam. And last, we have the force on the right support. Now, whether we'd already solved for the force on the right support or not is a little bit irrelevant, because even if we know the force on the right support is 17.5 pounds, that force is acting at a radius of zero. And so it's gonna cancel itself out. So solving for the force on the left support. We find the force on the left is 42.5 pounds. Now, having solved for both the force on the right and left sides, we can actually check this problem to be 100% sure that we haven't messed anything up. You see, these two forces, which are two forces upward on this beam, add up to 60 pounds. And those 60 pounds are the total weight which the supports are in fact holding up. You could also say, if you wanna go back to Newton's laws, that there's a total force downward of 60 pounds, plus a total force upward of 60 pounds results in a net force of zero. That is to say this beam and this block are going to remain static. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.